welcome to Bible Heritage. We're glad you joined us here in person and also on Facebook Live. We have a bit of housekeeping. It's a new month. This year's starting to fly by. It's February, the month of love. Well, our newsletter for our Pine Club, our children's program, is out. And the verse that I selected for this month is Isaiah 43 and 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Next Sunday is our Valentine's banquet. So get together with your sweetheart and come, let's have a good time. We're going to have food, fun, and fellowship. If you can bring anything, see myself or Sister Alicia to help. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Also, our Make a Difference for Jesus Day, which we do once a month, um, is Saturday, the 17th. And that's our baking tape for the nursing home in Blackshear. There's a sign-up sheet out there for that as well. We would love for you to come and go with us. And let, help us love on these folks. There's 15 people in this home. And they just get so much joy from seeing just a handful of people. So if we just bring more, then we can bless them more. And get a blessing ourselves. Because David gets a kick out of it every time. Because there's this one lady. And she says, I ain't never, ever seen a preacher with a beard. You ain't no preacher. <laughs> and you got the shape. So, Miss Betty keeps us going. But we want to love on her. Also, it is just February, but Easter's in March. So, we got to think about Easter. Bring me your kids. Let me love on them. Let's start teaching them these songs and these little skits because we're going to have an Easter play. We're going to have an egg hunt. We're going to have all kinds of things. And the practice starts today until Easter um, when we do it. We're going to do it March the 24th, the day, the Sunday before Easter, which is Palm Sunday. So I know that was a lot to take in. There's flyers for everything. Don't let it overwhelm you. But I encourage you just to stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open up in worship today. Lord, I ask you right now, God, to just pour your spirit down upon this service, Lord. Just open our hearts and our minds and let us receive the joy, the peace that passes all understanding, Lord. Just minister to our needs, no matter what they are, God. Fill us with your love and let us pour out into others today. Fill this house overflowing with your people that there's nowhere to sit. That is the vision that we have right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
There's a lot of gospel in that song. I can't sing it and play it, but I love it. I like the truth that's in it. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 31. Genesis 31. Today I've entitled this message, Handling Conflict. Anybody ever, don't raise your hand, anybody ever ever had conflict? <laughs> as long as there are people on the face of the earth. <laughs> you might do a better job than I am today. <laughs> you don't take it. She's welcome to do it. <laughs> you won't need a microphone. Huh? Praise the Lord. But as long as there's people, as long as there's people, there's going to be conflict. I don't care if it's in your house, if it's in your neighborhood, if it's on your job. And I don't care if it's even in the church. There is always going to be conflict. Somebody's going to say something that sets you off. Somebody's going to do something that you don't approve of or that upsets you in some fashion or another. 
And today I hope to show you through the Word of God what we're supposed to do. I'm not always successful with this because I'm living in this fleshly body. And sometimes this fleshly body overrides my, my spiritual man. And uh, almost every day in one of these environments, whether it's the home or, or wherever, all across America, in every church across America, in every church around the world, every pastor that I've talked to in every foreign country has had to deal with with this subject of conflict. I don't like conflict. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I'd rather crawl over glass than to have somebody upset with me. I don't, I don't like it. Sometimes I can flare up and sometimes others can flare up at me. It just happens. The problem in our text today in Genesis 31 is Jacob is a deceiver, and his uncle Laban is also a deceiver, and two deceivers in the same room have conflict. Because <laughs> when you're used to getting your way through deceit, and then you meet up with somebody that's just as deceitful as you are, there is going to be conflict. Be careful what you sow because you will eventually reap it in conflict. Genesis 31, let's look at verse 1. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and from what was our father's he has acquired all this wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable toward him as before. Jacob realizes because his brother-in-laws have accused him of something that he's not guilty of. And they say, you have gotten your wealth through our daddy and off of our daddy. You didn't earn it. And that really upset him. It upset him terribly. Jealousy was what these brother-in-laws were experiencing. And jealousy is one of the greatest igniters of conflict that there ever can be. Whether it's jealousy in the home, work, or in your neighborhood, or in the church. Song of Solomon 8, 6 says, Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. It flames, are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Jealousy left unattended can turn into a spirit of jealousy. It can become demonic. And if you've never dealt with a spirit of jealousy, it is an awful thing to contend with. In Numbers 5, in verse 11 through 14, Moses said, Speak to the, God, God said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, If a man's wife goes astray and behaves unfaithfully toward him, and a man lies with her carnally, and it is hidden from the eyes of her husband, and it's concealed that she has defiled herself, and there was no witness against her, nor was she caught. If the spirit of jealousy comes upon him, and he becomes jealous of his wife, who has defiled herself, or if a spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he becomes jealous of his wife, although she has not defiled herself, then he goes on telling what they need to do. So there's, so you see from the word of God, it can be beyond just normal jealousy and can become a spirit of jealousy, demonic. 
You let one kid get something more than another kid has. And that kid gets jealous of the other one. If you don't believe that, come to my house sometime. Those two girls will say, you do it, you gave Brianna more than you gave me, or you gave Braylon more than you gave me. And, and, and they want it absolutely fair. And I tell them, babes, life is not always about fair. Amen. You don't always get your way. You don't always get to do things the way you want. And you certainly don't get everything that you want. And so remember... When you're dealing with somebody uh, that didn't give you a promotion, that didn't give you a raise, that uh, accused you of something, be careful that it doesn't turn into a spirit if you don't crucify that flesh that first time. If you don't keep crucifying it with the word of God, eventually it can turn into a spirit and you don't want to be influenced by a demonic spirit. My mom always used to say this scripture, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. It seems like family can be some of the greatest areas of conflict. I got a family member that I just found out yesterday that expects me to come and tell them I'm sorry for something that I didn't do. And I thought to myself, why didn't I learn about that a long time ago? But without going into any details, they got their feelings hurt. And, and I said, well, why, why, why didn't they come and talk to me? Why didn't they say something? And they said, well, they just thought because you're a preacher and they're not, that you should have I guess heard from the Lord. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes our, our little spiritual radar don't always work. And we don't always know that somebody's upset or, or that somebody's until you come and talk to a person. <clears throat> and so that's why Jesus gave in explicit instructions in Matthew 18 and verse number 15 through 17. He said, moreover, if your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And if he hears you, you've gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. In other words, don't have nothing to do with him because he's just so far gone that you don't want him to do. And that's the way I've determined that I'm praying and asking the Lord what I should do about that situation in my own, my own family. But don't let things fester until they blow up. Don't let things get on your nerves to the place where you just lose it. And 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 I, I, I used to tell a man, he used to... Uh, uh, beat his wife a lot and, and, and I used to go to him and I, and I said as your pastor I'm begging you please don't beat your wife and uh, he said but she makes me so mad and I said if she makes you that mad go pull some weeds go and, and take a walk go take a drive go run around the house about 8 or 10 times but don't beat her there is nothing that says, I hate you more than beating your wife. God told Jacob when he asked him, and he said, well, what do I do, Lord? Verse 3 of chapter 31, the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. See, when the conflict happened, the first thing he did is what you and I need to do when conflict happens in our lives. And that is, we need to go to the Lord and say, what? do I need to do about this? Sometimes God will say, do nothing. Say nothing. Now that's hard to do sometimes, <laughs> to do nothing. Because <laughs> everything in your flesh is saying, I want to I spout off. I want to say something back. And sometimes the Lord just simply says, say nothing. 
Now, in this case, the Lord told Jacob, I want you to return back to where you're supposed to be at. In Canaan land, where your grandfather was promised the land of Israel, where your father Isaac was promised the land of Israel. And you're way, you were only supposed to go over here just for a little while. But you weren't supposed to stay here all these years. And, and, and so a lot of that was his own fault because he had stayed so long in the wrong place. <coughs> God told Jacob, get out of there. Now verse 4. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flock and said to them, I see your father's countenance that is not favorable toward me as before, but the God of my Father has been with me, and you know that with all my might I have served your Father. Yet your Father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not allow him to hurt me. Now here, he's confiding in his wives. He's got two of them. He's really in trouble. He's got two wives. And he says to both of those women, he says, Rachel, Leah, uh, I prayed about this and, and I got to go back to the land of Israel. I got to go back to the land of my fathers. Your daddy has changed my wages 10 times and, and that's not the way God intended it to be. And, and uh, you know your dad's done me wrong. And, and uh, you know, and so he tells his two wives and, and so then it says, uh, in verse 13, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. God reminded him in verse 20 of chapter 28, where he had said, Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And the stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house and all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. So he, 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 he was reminded that he had made a vow to go back home and he didn't keep the vow. And so that's why conflict happened, because he stayed too long. But then, as I said, he brought his wives into the conflict. So now they're mad at daddy. They're mad at their daddy because now they've got to leave their home, everything that they know, and they've got to go to a place they've never been before, into the land of Canaan, and uh, be careful when you bring people into your conflict because you're going to bring more attitudes and more judgments and more personalities and next thing you know, you're going to have a big old fight on your hands. Rachel and Leah were upset that their father had not given them their portion of their inheritance and they knew if they took off with their husband, they were never going to get their inheritance. And so they were all upset about this. And so the one thing that Jacob was correct about being upset about, now he's got more issues added to that. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you let something go, that it seems like more and more and more gets added to it? You ever get in an argument with your husband or your wife and, and, and all of a sudden you're arguing about the, 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 the uh, crock pot and, and next thing you know, well, when we first got together, <laughs> there, there was, you, you said so-and-so to me, you know. And then, and then that conflict gets brought back all the way to years per earlier. So be careful bringing people into your conflict. So it says in verse 17, then Jacob, of chapter 31, then Jacob rose and set his sons and his wives on camels, and he carried away all his livestock, and all his possessions which he had gained, his acquired livestock which he had gained in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. He listened to the Lord, and now things are going to start working out for him. You'll see as we read in the days and the weeks to come as we go on from this.
this chapter, we'll see how God is really blessing his life. And God is pouring out his spirit on him because he's listening instead of staying there in the midst of conflict. If I had to work in a place where there was fussing and fighting all the time, I'd find me a new job. If I had to stay in a neighborhood where they was fussing and fighting over, over the fence or over a tree or over my dog or whatever, I'd have to probably move. I just don't want conflict going on and on and on. And today I want to ask you as I close this message out, is there any conflict in your life? Is there some argument that's going on between you and your husband or wife? Is there argument going on between you and a neighbor? Is there argument between you and a family member? Is there argument going on because of you and, and maybe somebody on the job? Well, it's time to bring it to the Lord. We used to sing, take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you'll trust and never doubt, God will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. I had a lady that lied on me one time. And how many like to have somebody lie on you? I don't. And she lied on me. And my first instinct was to go do something about it. And I prayed, and the Lord said, do nothing. Do nothing. I said, yes, Lord, but she's lying. And, and he said, do nothing. And I didn't listen to him. And I confronted this little lady. And it turned into a real big old stink. And it got ugly. And I regretted it. As soon as it came out of my mouth, it was like the Lord said, didn't I tell you to be quiet? And it would be a year later when I would find out from this lady that if I had just been quiet, it would have all worked out within two or three weeks anyway. We fail to take things to the Lord and leave it there. Because if we would, oh, we wouldn't have the conflict that we wind up falling into. So will you pray with me now? Father, in the name of Jesus, if there's someone in this room that's going through conflict, maybe it's on their job or maybe it's in their home or with family members or a neighbor or a co-worker, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will resolve the conflict. I pray that they'll come to you and get a word from you. For you know the beginning from the end, Lord. You know the first from the last. And you know what we should do about a situation. And God, sometimes you tell us to leave certain people alone. And sometimes you tell us to be quiet. And other times you tell us to go to them and, and, and say, I'm sorry, even when it's our fault or their fault. Father, I pray you give us wisdom that we will do exactly what you want us to do in the name of Jesus. Resolve the folks' conflict that are watching by way of enemy. Resolve those in this house today that are in conflict right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to